Hi guys, hope you're well and it's time for another Honest Vlog today. And today's subject is going to be about insomnia. Now I've been planning this video for a while because um, it's something I've written about numerous times for various people um, but I haven't really spoken about it much yet. I have to thank Phil and Holly on this morning for reminding me to do this because they had um, a call in about um, sleep issues and insomnia on the show yesterday and that just jogged my memory that this was on my to-do list. That's a, a morning magazine show for people that don't live in the UK. I'll talk about when I first had some issues with sleeping. Um, I think it was about 13 years ago. I'd had some deaths happen um, in the family but also not in the family and a few of the deaths were kind of tragic circumstances, too young to die really, like tragic events. And I think that kind of shook the core of me a little bit. I think nighttime became a time when I'd start to worry about things. And one of the things I was worrying about was death. And I started, you know, worrying about losing more family members or people I love. And then you know how it works. You start worrying about one thing and then it leads to worrying about other things. And then before you know it, the mornings come and you haven't had any sleep. I think because my parents are slightly older parents as well, um, I was worrying about you know losing them when I was still relatively young and things like that. It's a fairly common worry that people have. People worry about you know mortality and things like that, their own mortality and people they love. So that's not really out of the ordinary at all, I don't think. And I think when I was a teenager at that point, I think you've got new stresses in your life when you're a teenager. You're you know you're studying. You've got pressures of wanting to achieve for yourself, but also to please your parents or people that are watching what you do. Um, I had my first romantic relationship at that time as well, which kind of ended really sadly and badly and much to my surprise. So I think that's something which led to some sleepless nights and upset nights too. So that was the beginning and that was just at that point I didn't think this was going to be a long-standing thing, I thought it was just a reaction to, you know, events that were happening at the time. But as I said, 13 years later, I still struggle with sleep. Admittedly, I'm in a relatively okay period at the moment, but there's been a few nights recently where I've felt old things start to um, trickle back in again and it's made me panic a bit, which is not a good thing because the more that you're thinking about it, the more likely it's going to happen. A few years ago, I was in a really bad um, way when it came to my sleep. I wouldn't get any sleep whatsoever. I'd literally be up all night, um, day after day. And then I would occasionally be able to have naps in the day. But obviously, if you're someone that works full time, this isn't something you'd be able to do. You can't just nap at your desk or wherever you work. So in a way, I was very lucky that I was a freelancer and therefore could do the naps during the day. When it came to night time, I felt like my brain just wouldn't shut off. That would be the time when all my anxieties, all my worries, all my stresses would come into this big, like, bubbling mass behind my eyes and it was too overwhelming to kind of combat. There was no way sleep was going to happen with that much going on and the situations I, were, I was in at the time and the bad people I had in my life at the time, it was at a point where you couldn't find a solution, there was no remedy, there was um, no way I saw out the situations. So that hopelessness led to, you know, this drawn out few years of no sleep um, and even when I did get sleep it probably wasn't quality sleep, quality sleep, quality sleep because I would end up having nightmares about the, the things I was worrying about. So I think the main reason I wanted to do this video is because sometimes sleep issues, um, insomnia, or there's so many different sleep disorders you can have, um, they're not given, I don't want to say the importance, but like I feel like we're starting to make some progress when it comes to mental illness, like people are starting to talk about anxiety and depression, but you shouldn't dismiss how much sleep affects both your physical and mental health. If you're not getting it, things quickly start to falter and deteriorate. And I think it should be taken extremely seriously. And anyone that's suffering with sleep disorders or sleep issues shouldn't feel that they're not worthy of being discussed or and you're allowed to feel sad and stressed about it because it can affect your life in such a drastic way. 
I started doing some really strange things because I wasn't getting any sleep. My brain just wasn't functioning the way it should be. I was putting my bank pin code in the microwave, for example. When I was trying to make my breakfast, I'd find myself rooting through my bin. Like bizarre behavior like that just because I was so tired and nothing in here was um, you know, working with the momentum it should be working with. Everything was slightly slow or confused and muddled and um, yeah, I just went a bit mad, I guess. Obviously, if you've got uh, work where you have to be accurate, um, you have to be thorough. For instance, if you're a journalist or a blogger, you don't want to be putting out work that's full of typos or like grammatic mistakes or anything like that. And when you're tired, these things happen and you don't spot them and you can't even see them. And then when someone else spots them, then you feel bad about yourself. And so then that's another trail of, um, you're already feeling crap, you're already run down. Uh, when you're run down, you're more emotional, then bad things are happening because you're tired and because you're emotional, you can't deal with those things. So it's just a trail and it can lead to awful things. So anyone watching this who hasn't you know, dealt with any sleep issues, don't underestimate the effect it can have on people that have them and please be sympathetic towards them because it is hard to deal with. And talking about the emotional side, um, because I wasn't getting any sleep and I was in that stressful time in my life, I was an emotional wreck. Because life still has to continue whether or not you're getting sleep because people at your office or at your work don't care really that you're not getting sleep. They still need the jobs done. They still need the work to get done. So even if I hadn't slept for a couple of days, I would still have to you know, commute to London, do an interview, and you know edit it and all that and i would cry pretty much the whole journey um i'd be sobbing on the tube sobbing on the sobbing on the train and i actually used to find those those as soon as i was alone um that would happen because i'd have time to think again and also you don't want to turn up to an interview with the emotions on the surface like the scar down your cheeks and i've got to say doing interviewing is and was incredibly hard because when you haven't slept. You're just not on the ball. You find it harder to banter, um, respond to those tangents that people go off on, um, and just be generally with it. And you know, remember all the dates of things that you're meant to remember when you do an interview. So that's hard. And I just have to go on Twitter just one day or meet up with a group of my friends and we always get onto the subject of someone wants to go on sleeping pills. Someone's just come off sleeping pills. Someone hasn't slept very well recently etc and I think we just live in incredibly stressful times I think social media has a huge part to play in people's sleep issues um, if you look for advice all doctors will say don't be on your phone or your computer or watching TV or anything like that at least an hour before bed because the light that's coming into your eyes and the activity that's going on that's telling your brain that the brain is meant to still be active. It's not going in shutdown mode. For many of us, particularly bloggers and YouTubers or people that work in media or just have social media accounts, we're, we're kind of expected to be contactable 24 seven and therefore our brain never really switches off because we know that people are tweeting us, commenting on things. Well, even when we're in the sleep zone, in the hours where we should be asleep, I think the temptation is all too easy. If we've got a phone next to our bed or under our pillow, TV in front of our bed, it's all too easy to just stick that on because it's habit, also feels like we've got some company um, and because we think that's part of our job. But the reality is we're not gonna improve our sleep till we're strict with ourselves. Like when I have insomnia, I'm often tweeting going, oh, I can't sleep, which is so stupid because that's not helping me. But at the time, it feels like the right thing to do because I, I want to be doing something um, with this time and I want to kind of be reaching out and see if anyone else is in the same situation. I actually find it harder to deal with my insomnia uh, now I'm in a relationship. When I was single, if I couldn't sleep, I would maybe get up, get a drink. Maybe I'd sit down in the lounge. Um, maybe I'd watch a film put the telly on, but when you've got a partner sleeping very soundly, 
which is annoying by the way, next to you and snoring, um, you feel like you can't do anything. You've just got to sit there rigidly and just stare into space till your body decides it's going to let you sleep. And then you get even more frustrated because you're so bored and you've still got those things whizzing around your brain. The thing is, all those things that I said I would have done when I was single weren't benefiting me anyway, but I did them because they did give me some comfort. Because the issue with me is I still can't switch off. I'm still worrying about things, stressing about things. And I put the TV on because it's a distraction. It stops me thinking about those things. And instead I'm thinking about, I don't know, what Rachel and Ross are doing or whatever. And I tend to put on things that I'm very familiar with, things that I've watched millions of times before because I figure my brain doesn't have to concentrate as much, so there is a chance that I'll be able to fall asleep to that programme. Now, there are a few things that do help and that I would recommend to others, but I still haven't found that fix yet. If there are recurring issues that you know keep you up at night, things that you're thinking about, or worrying about, then do go and see a therapist, either through your GP, or if you are lucky enough to have a budget, go and see a private one that will be able to see you straight away, because they may be able to lift any of those worries or stresses or guilts or shames off your shoulder and you might be able to sleep. If you're just awake because you've got great ideas that you want to do or things you need to do for work or whatever, write them down so then you're not worrying about, will I forget, will I remember them in the morning? They'll be there and you will have got them out of your brain. Maybe have a hot bath. Um, I know it does tend to make me a little bit more sleepy if I have a bath before bed, but then I find as soon as I then start blow drying my hair, then it wakes me up again. So if you can go to bed, um, after a bath, maybe don't do your hair. Um, that might help. There's obviously scents that you can put on the pillow that are meant to ease you off. Um, I went on sleeping pills for a while when things are really bad and the doctor was like, okay, you just need to have a few weeks where you actually get some sleep. And they did work really well for me, but unfortunately, but rightly so, um, I wasn't allowed to stay on them because they don't want anyone to rely on these things. They're a very temporary fix. Um, but they did work for me. So if you are at a state where you're like, I can't deal with this anymore, do go to the doctor, have a chat and tell them what's going on. And hopefully they might be able to help you for a little bit or give you ideas of how to, you know, work this out long term. I know some of you will be awake because of pain or discomfort due to illness as well. And that's a horrible thing. I don't know if I'm alone at this, but I find I do find nighttime hard. I don't like when the light's off and I don't have any light source on. I do find as soon as it's dark um, and there's no one talking and it's completely silent, I do start to go back to that pattern of overthinking things, um, getting a bit paranoid about things, overthinking conversations I've had. You know, does that person like me? Did I say the wrong thing there? Um, oh, I should have done that, I should have said this. And it just goes on and on. And, and that's another reason why I tend to fall asleep with the TV on so my brain isn't given the chance to get into that um, pattern again, but I know that's bad for me too. And obviously, like I said with all my honest vlogs, it can affect relationships too, because if you're tired, you're a bit more ratty, you're a bit more um, reactive to things, um, you're also obviously not as up for doing fun things that um, the other partner might want to do because you, you just need sleep so bad. Yeah, it, it's tricky. And like I said, the reason I wanted to do this video mainly was to just say to people that are struggling, you, you have every right to be struggling because it's hard. It's not an easy thing to have to deal with. If you're managing to kind of carry on and live a fairly um, a normal life well done to you but please do something about it if you're at that point where you're at the end of your tether with it because I can see how you can get to that it can get to a point where you actually don't want to be around anymore because it's you just feel so horrendous and so stressed and so emotional because um, it really does affect your mental health as well so um, if you are struggling speak to people 
go and see your GP. Really, really try your best to switch off from all technology if you can. I know it's hard though, I totally agree with you. It was interesting on the programme I was watching about it, um, they're saying that it, we're all genetically made to need different amounts of sleep, that there's a small portion that need less than four, like Margaret Thatcher, and there's a, another small portion that need like about 12 hours. Most of us are in the six to eight hour sort of thing. It, one reason why some people can't fall off to sleep is perhaps there's someone that only needs actually about four hours sleep and they're going to bed at 10 o'clock and they're just sitting there and lying there and going, oh, I can't sleep. That's because you're not tired yet. You don't need to fall asleep. So I think it's very important that you work out what amount of sleep you actually need um, to suit you. Um, and then you'll know kind of what time you should be going to bed and getting up. And it might remove that frustrating element of just lying there waiting to fall asleep, which is not fun for anyone. And it doesn't need to happen for everyone. There is a way to kind of fix that for some people. Another thing that I think all insomniacs will relate to is the clock watching thing. Looking at the clock going, okay, it's one o'clock now. That means I've got to be up in six hours. Oh, it's two o'clock now. That means I've got to be up in four hours and on and on. And then eventually it's morning. That clock watching is torturous. It was really awful and we shouldn't do it to ourselves. So I think if possible, don't look at the clock as well because I don't think that helps anything. That just stresses you out even more and reduces the chance of you falling asleep. So yeah, I've rambled on long enough about it, but as I said, I am sleeping, but lately I have had a few nights where I've been getting up and having to go downstairs and just sit there. It's not as bad as it was years ago when I used to rock like this because I was so stressed out and so exhausted and actually going mad with it. It is taking its toll. I am feeling shattered. My body is not in a good way and it is affecting um, my mood so. I will try and nip it in the bud if I can. But oh, I wonder if any of this video has even made sense because I'm so tired. But anyway, I hope if I haven't been able to help in any way, I hope you're watching this and maybe can relate to some of the things I'm saying and the fact that other people are going through it, I hope is some comfort to you. I feel you. Take care and please don't just leave it. Try and do something about it. Thanks for watching and sleep well.